And done. <sighs> Finally done with my game. The game is perfect. Now I can finally rest in peace. Wait, what's this? <laughs> wait, 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 no, wait, don't stop. Please stop. No! If you're new around here, a few months ago I challenged myself to make a game in a month. A first person shooter with food themed weapons and roguelike elements. Basically, if Call of Duty Zombies had roguelike elements and was themed around food. So after releasing my game, there did not seem to be any big issues at first. But to no one's surprise, there were a lot of bugs and issues still in the game. One of them being camping, and it's probably way worse than you can imagine. But how bad can it be, you ask? Well, let me just pull up a fine little photo here. You probably haven't realized it yet, but you're not actually supposed to get to that wave without moving a muscle. Now, if that's not an issue, I don't, I don't know what is. So, how about we fix it? There's multiple problems that all add to the camping dumpster fire. And I think Emma's sums it up pretty good. The game boils down to this. Sit in a corner and shoot at whatever is walking towards you from the other side of the map. The best strategy is to literally sit in a single spot and not move. I really don't know what genre this game is supposed to be in, but damn, I don't think it's a camping simulator. So as you probably realize now, we need to do something about this camping problem. And we need to do it fast. So there's obviously no better place to start then, um... Now you might be thinking, but Mr. Lonely, I think the AI looks pretty good. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. But I had to stop you there, because rather than looking on the outside, where it looks normal, let's actually take a look on the inside of the enemies. You see the problem now? And this big spaghetti code leads to some pretty heavy problems, like, did you know that all the enemies can only have a total of two attacks? And none of them can be melee attacks, only range. No wonder the bosses suck so much ass. Sometimes the enemies would just lose all their senses and become mind-numbing pieces of junk, because they would just lock in place and do absolutely nothing. In short, we really need some new enemies. And for that, I'm going to create this little mini-project. When making these enemies, I had one thing in mind. Flexibility. Because as I just said before, the old enemies could only have two attacks, and actually, it was only the bosses that had two attacks, all the other enemies had one attack. So if I wanted to, say, make a four-armed melee guy, I could do that. Or if I wanted to make some flying shooting bird or something, I could also do that. Alright, it took some time, but I think I got the enemies working. Ah, uh, don't mind that. But what does these enemies have to do with camping? Not much, but I mean, they need the Wii work anyways, so might as well do it. And we're going to have to set aside that problem for now, because we got a bigger problem on our hands here. There's no map that the enemies we just made, or well, I just made, can walk around on. I guess, I guess we could just make a new map, but mapping is not that easy though. It's actually quite complicated. Basically, draw some dots, and then lines connecting them, and we got a map. Then, just make the map in Blender. Put it into Unity, and done. Feel free to comment what you guys want to see in the next video. Peace. I mean, that looks pretty easy. And yes, this is actually what I did. Made a little sketch, blocked it out, tested it, shunk it a few times because people thought it was too big for its own good. Then I finally detailed it, and we got a map. Which, to be honest, is way better than the old one. But just look at these two side by side and tell me which one you think looks the best in terms of layout. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. There's also just in general a lot more variation than just, oh look, there's a cool building. And over there, there is the same exact building. Actually, look at this. It's the same building. You get the idea. Also, you can actually now see where the enemies will spawn in rather than having to guess that. But even though the map now looks more lively, it still feels lonely. I don't, I don't know what it could be, really. Oh yeah, right, the enemies. Well, we did make the new enemy AI system, but uh, we forgot to make the actual enemies. Now, these enemies should obviously be better than the original. That, that's the whole point. <laughs> and hopefully help to fix the camping problem. So, here we have the first enemy, the tomato. They throw tomatoes at the player.
We also got a few others with their own special attacks. One for example would cut you open with a pizza cutter. And if this one even catches you thinking about camping, it will personally delete you from the universe. But while making the map, I also added a few other things to the enemies, like making them reposition after attacking a few times. And one of, if not the most important thing, critical damage. Yes, you heard correctly, critical damage. No longer will you aim and shoot at the enemy's head and see that disappointing, sad number pop up. Now, when you shoot at their heads, a yellow number and a yellow hit marker will pop up, indicating that you hit right on their big forehead. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. And just hitting right in that weak spot would just feel amazing, if it weren't for the mediocre gameplay. What is the opposite of camping and standing still? Moving fast and not standing still. So let's crank up the player speed by a staggering amount of two. And while we're already making the game feel better, why not also make it look better by updating all these outdated particles? Which uh, will look a lot nicer. We can also add a nice little kill marker when killing an enemy. This, this is just a dopamine hit. Now these things do make the game feel better, but they don't enhance or change gameplay at all. So I went to my Discord server, what they would like to see, and they chose to keep it as it is, but add a dashing mechanic. And that's great and all, but there's a problem with that. Since we already have sprinting in the game on the shift key, there would be no obvious place to put the dashing ability, right? Wrong. If you don't know, you can press F to melee with a big spoon. Oh, uh, uh, wait, wrong game. There we go. But to be honest, not a lot of people use it. Scratch that, no one uses it to my knowledge. So, what does this have to do with the dashing mechanic? Well, what if, and hear me out, we change the melee mechanic a bit around. So when you're in the air and you press F, your normal melee attack turns into a dash, which still does damage. This way we get a lot more than just adding a dash mechanic, because now people will actually realize that they can melee attack. But why not just remove sprinting, make the base speed of the player a bit faster, and just add a dash mechanic on the shift key that you can perform at any time. Well, there's no reason to remove running. This is an ultra kill after all. That would be like saying, oh, we need to add grenades, but we already have guns in their place, so let's just remove the weapons. And actually, speaking of weapons... Okay, so there's two types of weapon bullets that games normally use, right? There's physical projectiles, and then there's ray casts. Which one do you think I picked? The cool physical projectiles that use physics and all that. Or the far less superior ray cast. Yes, I, I picked the ray casts. Now, other than it being far less superior to the physical projectiles, why was this a bad choice? Well, since my game is a roguelike, it has items that can change the course of the game drastically. I call them recipes in this game, and you probably realize by now, you can't really change much about an instantly hitting projectile, can you now? So why haven't I actually changed it into physical projectiles yet? Well, to be honest, I thought it was going to be pretty dang hard to change them. But it turns out, it could not have been easier. And guess what? It just works. And now we can have stuff like uh, grenades and, and better weapons and better weapons, don't forget that. Actually, speaking of which, I got to make some new guns because the gun department is getting kind of stale. So basically, I went online to look for references and guess what I found? A whole library full of foofing weapons. It was like entering heaven. And yes, I did check. I can legally use these in my game. And we got some new original guns. And here they are. Starting off with the can opener. It's your average day-to-day -day pistol. And it actually replaces the P pistol, which to be honest, look more like a cod skin more than anything. Then we got the carrot sniper. Uh-uh, wait a minute. That's just a reskin for the sniper. This is the actual next weapon, the Carrotier. The rocket launcher, I guess you would call it. it. It shoots big carrots and they explode. And yes, there's rocket jumping in the game, so you can do sick tricks like this. Uh, moving on from that, we have the Burrito Bison, which I yoinked from my Discord server. It's not really that new, in a sense that it's just a secondary SMG. But we also got another SMG, the Hot Saucier. This one is more spray and pray compared to the Burrito Bison, but still a good choice nonetheless. And moving on to something that is not an SMG, we have the Soul Launcher. 
which, as you probably guessed, shoots out soda cans. Functions pretty much like a smaller grenade launcher. And then, we got our final weapon of the day. And it's another SMG, called the gun gut shirt. Wait, what? It's another SMG, but this one is two-handed. And this one is actually my personal favorite, because just look at this reload animation. God damn! After I added the weapons, I just kind of fixed some smaller bugs here and there. There were some infinite money glitches, some soft locking the game, nothing, nothing to be concerned about. And in the end, did I actually fix the camping problem? Well, kinda. At least it's not as powerful as before. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, if you want to support the game, there is a download link in the description, or you can join my Patreon, or both. And if you got some ideas yourself for the game, why not join the Discord server and discuss it with us? Anyway, that's it. See you soon. Hopefully.